faces high. For the rest of the world, the aces high is just a cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades, and those cargo pants could store tools for hotfixing your aerostatic. Maybe you should ask him about this. Aces low. For the rest of the world, the aces low is just some cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades. And those cargo pants look like they could fit tools for hot fixing your burning aerostatic. You should ask him about this. Actual art degree. Trite, contrived, mediocre, milk toast, amateurish, infantile, cliche and gonorrhea ridden peon to conformism. I fucked me, affront to humanity. War crime. Should literally be tried for war crimes. Resolutely shit. Lacking in imagination. Uninformed reimagining of. Lip wristed, premature, ill informed attempt at. Talentless fuckfest. Recividistic shit peddler. Pedantic, listless, savagely boring. Just one repulsive laugh after another. Advanced race theory. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending phylogenetics appear more distant and to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Anti-object task force. Behold, the Anti-Object Task Force has assembled. God's Avenging Angel, arrayed against the lower emanations of the Darkened One. Shoe racks, tape recorders, motor carriages, and doors. So many doors. You're not just pounding it all to pieces. You're reforging the universe, from the anvil of the heavens to the worms below. Indulge in it. Be bold. Have an impact on the shape of creation. Out of the furnace of your rage, a new reality. Also, you should trash your room again. Apricot chewing gum scented one. August 2nd, early late summer. You're getting off the streetcar in Le Jardin, east of the river. Her father and mother are middle class. The nylon of her little jacket rustles next to you in the dark like autumn leaves. Her heels click on the pavement. You're walking up to the gate in front of her parents' house. She takes out her chewing gum and you kiss her. A feeling like electricity flows through your whole body. Immediately you know that you've entered a completely different world. Arno van Eyck. Okay, so Egghead is clearly not van Eyck in disguise. Van Eyck is an Oranese disc jockey, but those people get around, especially in Revachol, in the clubs on Boogie Street. Perhaps he stayed here for a short stint and discarded part of the song he was working on, just threw it away, and then it ended up in the Orthorn tree. But why? Did he think it was retrograde? It wasn't. Perhaps he caught a glimpse of the future and did not want for it to arrive just yet. Perhaps the city whispered the top line to him and he was frightened by it. Bankruptcy Sequence It's easy. You just need to move on. Like a plague of locusts. Like a fucking plague. 
Failure is a core tenet of liberalism. When life closes a door, it opens a window. And if the fall is too steep, use the fire exit. Run to the roof. You always have that airship on the dock. The most important thing is to keep moving. Keep dreaming. The auditors cannot get to you if you keep running very, very fast from one fuck up to the next. Boyadero. Smoking, Harry. It will take a lot of tobacco smoking for you to become a Boyadero. Twin cigarettes fused to your lips and one hanging out of your nostril. In these tame, cultured times, without the sky's dome above your head, the only way to be a true Franco-Nigerian individualist is to smoke a lot of cigarettes. Light one up immediately. The smell of coffee brewing over a fire pit, a chestnut-flavored morning. Welcome to Astra Country. Bringing of the law, law jaw. Okay, so we now know why you have law jaw. Why you say the law in a weird manner and why your jaw does that thing. You had polio as a child. You hadn't gotten vaccinated. It must have been right after the revolution. Not a lot of vaccine going around then. So you got infantile paralysis due to polio and this jaw thing is a complication from that. Admittedly, it's not very funny, but you overcame it. This little infant survived and became a sharp-shooting super cop. So, fuck you, polio. Caustic Echo. Splat. Splatity splat, Harry. You know what that means? It means the shit has fallen off the stick and it's bad again. You lost something and it's not your gun. It's not your badge. It's not your uniform. You can find all of those things. No, the charred echo was left by the one thing you will never find again. Not even if you dive into the sea in search of it. It's the love of your life, Harry. The scent is everywhere. The sound is in everything. The alarm goes off at three. Cleaning out the rooms. What if you didn't lose your memory? What if something in Martinez came and stored it all away for you to slowly open one box at a time so you can choose which parts to keep? Keep almost none of it. Only the flowers on the windowsill. Only the distant sound of a radio. Lose all the actors, the dark shadows. Leave only the still lifes, the blissful distant wash of waves. If everybody knew, you never did. She'll be coming soon. That is all. Coach Physical Instrument. Wait, how did you know all those hammer throw techniques? How do you know how to hold a discus? Or the world youth record in discus? Something doesn't add up here. This mushy thing between your ears didn't know the name of the city you're in but it comes loaded with trivia about the correct chin position of a shot put ball. Could it be that? Shut up, Namby Pamby. This train of thought ends abruptly. It's leg day. Straighten your rhombus muscle. It's shirts versus skins. Take your shirt off, Namby. Your skins. Call the Mama Dakwa. It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore. Your very skin has become an organ of hearing. Looking for a whisper, light and low. A god who's very, very silent. Nothing escapes you. A cockroach in the other room. A candy wrapper falling on dry grass. A drunk falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the call du mama dakwa, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. 
cop of the apocalypse. It's not fire. It's not ash. There will most certainly be a sea of corpses leading up to the event. But it won't be war or pestilence that causes it. Oh no, the event will belong to a genre of cataclysm no man has dared to suspect would ever come to pass. You can only sense the shape of it, like a cavity, a pit opening up in your stomach, a throat into which the world will vanish. The streets, the grass, the stars, all will be rolled back. By whom? By what? And how? You don't know. All you know is, you're not joking around. Date of birth generator. You were born in the year 07, in the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Detective Cousteau. Monsieur Cousteau, the reward for coming up with your classy new name has arrived. What are the attributes Detective Cousteau should gain in? Obviously, savoir-faire and esprit de corps. You know exactly what they do and what those words mean. They're refined, like you. You have a ton of that fancy stuff. And if the world can't accept Raphael Ambrosius is your name, you will always be Detective Cousteau to yourself. R.A. Cousteau, sophisticated culture detective, specializes in ancient things and art. Fairweather T-500 Remember that weakness you were looking for in the ceramic armor? Like, maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it? Or, if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt. Or, personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon, None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have Fairweather T-500 on it, because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. Finger on the eject button. Looks like you thought about how much they'll miss you and the freedom of finality for too long, and now you decided to actually kill yourself. The train leaves the station every evening. 2100, make sure you have a gun and bullets. That's how macho servicemen do it. Also, turns out, finger on the eject button is pretty much your theme song, a headbanger from your teenage years and your wedding ballad. This is not the first time you're spinning the tape. Finger pistol, nine millimeter. Snap, snap, baby. Turns out guns aren't that much for protecting as they are for attacking people. If you want to protect people, really work for them. You have to whip out your signature dual 9mm Villiers finger pistols. Who needs real guns anyway? That conversation you just had? It would have gone better had you snapped those bad boys at them. Note, 9mm dual finger pistols do not count for an actual weapon in a gunfight. Guillaume Flamillion. Bad news. Guillaume Lemillion did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, 
you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. Hardcore aesthetic. Oh yes, drugs. We're talking about drugs. Let's face it, these flirtations with the hardcore aesthetic have all been leading up to one question. Can I do drugs harder now that I'm a hard cop? And the answer is yes, you can. You can do one more blast of Pyrolidon and yellow shit powder. You can even pull a ciggy and a lager on top of that. There, you've truly made the hardcore your own thing now. Hobocop. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old l'assommoir? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royaume, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon. Then fight the Aramakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Homosexual Underground Maybe you should stop obsessing about your own and other people's sexuality. Feels like it's about time to do that. You thought about this for eight hours? Not only should you stop, you should tell Kim you've stopped obsessing about other people's sexuality too. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Unless you already got him killed because you were obsessing about your sexuality. There's no way of telling from within your brain. But for your own sake, please say you didn't. Indirect modes of taxation. Turns out those financial oversight committee gangsters stuffed millions of hard-earned dividends away in the last place anyone thought to look. The hearts and minds of everyday River Sholians. You need to spread that deregulation gospel to the people. Tell them about that foreign fair tax. Preach that 98% gross burden. Preach it, preacher man. Set the brothers free. Taxes are racist. Jamais vu. Derealization. Jamais vu. The opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. Kingdom of Conscience. The Kingdom of Conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on earth. Lonesome, long way home. Here we go, home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees, a small house no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? 
Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Magnesium-based life form. We tell them, hell no. You're about to become a magnesium-based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on slow working background radiation to take us further into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution and magnesium is the key. You are the first of your species. The next step in human evolution, an advanced magnesium proto man who mags it up, drinks it down and sniffs it sideways. Mazovian socio-economics. Nought point nought 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil child murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He is starting to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over personally with his socio economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. Motorway South. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder for an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting, until you can no longer remember anything. No cities. No mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. The motion of a human throat, swallowing, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. One more door. There is no way to open the supply depot door. Accept it. You cannot open all the doors. You have to integrate this into your character. Some doors will forever remain closed, even if every single other door will open at one time or another, maybe to a key, or maybe to some sort of tool meant for opening doors. But this one will never accede to such commands, a realization crucial to personal growth, crucial. Opioid receptor antagonist. Halt, put down the pipe, scumbag. The knock is on the scene and he's gonna tell it to you straight. Drugs are for losers. They fry your brain and rewire your circuits to self-destruct. And they make you masturbate too. Have a drink instead. Have two. Have three bottles of wine. It's impossible to masturbate after three bottles of wine. And remember, friends don't let friends get high or be sober. Peace out, little brother. Overproductive honor glands. Here it is. It's titled Honor for the Brave and goes, I have no family. I make honor my family. I have no home. I make bravery my home. I have no desire. I make dignity my desire. I have no friends. I make humility my friend. I have no enemy. I make Dishonor my enemy. This is my vow of honor. For the brave, I am brave. Something like that. It's not the words that matter. It's the honor. Regular law official. You've done it, Harry. Whatever else you are, you're also boring now. It was not easy. 
You spent most of your life trying to funk up every nook and cranny of your personality. When someone says something political, the first three thoughts in your head are a ludicrous hodgepodge of communism, fascism, and stock tips. When they ask you why you did something, it's superstardom, apocalypse, or the mea culpus of the flagellant cop monk. It's not easy reaching for the fourth option, the normal one, but you have, and now you're not just crazy, you're also boring. Remote Viewers Division It is done. You've broken loose from the confines of modern science and into the vault of extrasensory knowledge from exotic cultures. Mankind has always searched for a means to break the shackles restraining the mind. Some practice meditation. Some take like a ton of DMT. You apparently only need to rub your temples and bam, the ether opens before you, presenting its dark secrets. Entities in the void making contact. Definitely not just because you're rubbing your temples and talking to yourself. Revisholian Nationhood The Revisholian state will be a serene place. You should get a drink. A beautiful serene place of mystery and peace. It will not be a place for women to infect with their frailty and hysterics, or where the Seminese will be allowed to wear their pants around their ankles. All of that will go once you get a drink. The socialist professors at the École Supérieure will be fired. The editors of Trompe le Monde will have to beg in the streets. You'll pour beer into their begging hats and laugh. You should get a beer. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And, above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you, all the love and patience of your friends, you drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win, and it will keep on winning till you die, or overcome it. Searchlight Division You've sharpened your senses by being on the lookout for missing persons. Now you notice more of what's happening around you. Perhaps when you're done with this case, you can join the Searchlight Division of the RCM and find every River Sholian that's ever gone missing without a trace. There is undoubtedly a backlog of such cases because you never know. A missing person could be just around the edge, barely out of sight. Some kind of superstar. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die, in a cool voice. You people have no idea how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. The Bow Collector. It's early in the morning. The world is dark blue. The sparks light her face. A delicate composition of triangles. The streets seem to grow longer, like in a dolly zoom. And 
There's something in the air as you stand there and wave back at the shapes growing smaller and smaller. Something that has always been there. A great see-through world. The tenderness you feel. The ghost of Revachol between you, carrying your signals. The Holy Messenger. The 15th Indo Tribe. Because there was. The 15th Indo Tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo Tribe was your Indo Tribe, set to rule in Cylinder. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. The Insulindian Miracle. It's easy. You know the poem by heart because you were taught it at school. It is one of the Volta Dolmar mantras repeated on the voyage that lead to the discovery of the Insulindian Isola. And the words mean nothing will be changed about the light. Colors like gray and brown, all printed on top of each other. I found a blank white spot. All the others looked up. What a beautiful day. What beautiful weather. But all I heard was the printing machine. What strange words to celebrate a new world. The Jamrock Shuffle. In a way, yes, you are treasure hunting. Most officers from Precinct 41 do what is called the Jamrock Shuffle, cracking open containers. Most of them are from Jamrock or Coal City, the poorest parts of Revachol, that also overlap with the network of royal catacombs called Le Royam, just beneath the streets. As children, you would all go underground hoping to find treasure and come back with a rat's tail or a used needle. That playful curiosity must still be in you. Who knows, maybe one day the Orb de Montagne, the Holy Scepter, and the Cocaine Skull will all be yours. The Litany of Contact Mike. 5,000 to one rank outsider. No one saw it coming. The mantle of a game changer demands intangible qualities. Fights are not won. You're thinking instead of doing detective work right now. Fights are made, blow by blow. Let's take it, Mike to the Mikey. Some low intensity part of you has entered a sports cliche driven fugue state and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Also, Mike knew what it took to win. He just wanted it more. The Precarious World. How not to lose? It is impossible not to. The world is balanced on the edge of a knife. It's a game of frayed nerves. You're pushed on by numbers and punitive measures, pain, rejection, and unpaid bills. You can either play or you can crawl under a boat and waste away, turn into salt or a flock of seagulls. Your enemies would love that. Or you can fight. The only way to load the dice is to keep on fighting. The Suicide of Kraz Mazov It's clearly a lie. Kraz Mazov didn't shoot himself. Reaction was on the counteroffensive. The State Day Palace in Mirova was surrounded. He was either assassinated or died in the bombing. You might even have evidence to support this somewhere in your brain. Mazov was never given a state funeral by the communists. Some people even say the body that was recovered from the ruins wasn't his. There, good. Hero restored to glory. Carry on, comrade. Talk, talk. You're elbow deep in there now, in what seems to be a motor carriage, a Capri 40. 
the hoods off in your mind's eye and you're listening. There's that clicky noise. Are the rod bearings already done for? Well, if the head's coming off, you might as well get that new twin scroll turbo with the magnesium manifold installed. Some would say it's overkill to put 200 big ones under that. But this needs to be solid, so the rear... Hey, what were we talking about again? What were we doing? Volumetric shit compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Rivershall West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. Wasteland of reality. Congrats, you're sober. It will take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol. So you're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks. In two months, you might start sleeping like a normal person. Full recovery will take years though. It'll be depressing and it'll be boring. Don't expect any further rewards or hand claps. This is how normal people are all the time. Wompty Dompty Dom Center. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And, let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. <laughs> 